All right, hello Virgo. This is going to be your October 2020 reading. So try to do things a little differently. So I've got two oracle cards from the Halloween oracle underneath. I've got three tarot cards as usual. I'm going to be drawing from my um, oracle deck as well. I'm going to be drawing clarification cards for tarot. And then of course going to be incorporating some uh, normal playing cards for uh, extra tarot advice without it actually being a tarot card going to be pulling, or rolling rather, my dice as usual, so just going to be doing things just a little bit different, but definitely going to be seeing what we're going to be got, what we have rather, for October 2020 for Virgo. If you do not know your birth sign, you know, usually people go for Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus for Virgo, but if you don't know your birth chart, perfectly fine. You can just go with your star sign based on how you fall on the calendar placement. That is perfectly fine. I feel like that works for a lot of people as well. So it's totally fine, but we're definitely going to be seeing what we've got for Virgo right now. Okay, Virgo, the very first cards we have are your three tarot cards. So the first one we have is the Three of Cups. This talks about um, third-party energy, but also more than likely a celebration of some kind, since they are at a masquerade, everyone's drinking, have a good time. So there's definitely going to be something to do with a celebration of some sort coming for you in October. Like I said, this is a generalized reading, so nothing super specific. Um, if it resonates, amazing. If not, that's fine. Next card is going to be the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is talking about being emotional, but also being in control of your emotions, being diplomatic about it, being very controlled, being very nurturing as well. All of the queens are very nurturing, while also being very strong and in control. Then we have the Ace of Swords. This is talking about new beginnings, pretty much, but also talking about... Um, starting something, you know, all of the aces are starting something brand new, but this is definitely talking about starting, uh, to move on. Really, that's pretty, ooh. Yeah, I pretty much just heard that. Moving on. Very much. It's time to move on. October, you are moving forward with something very, very interesting. So, the Three of Cups, Queen of Cups, and then the Ace of Swords. You're moving forward. You are cutting ties with something that was emotionally blocking you, I feel like. Very interesting. So the first one we have is the lamp for your oracle cards. It talks about remembrance. So this is probably talking about things, you know, the, the, the phrase of remember where you came from, kind of. But this one is also talking about um, remembering things that, you know, you, you have them in your memory and it's fine. But you also move on from that if you need to. It's definitely what I'm hearing from that. Definitely how I'm taking that card tonight. The next one we have is winter. The sacredness of pa pausing, almost a passing, sacredness of pausing. So with Virgo specifically, that is the, um, uh, obviously it's an earth element, but it is also uh, tied into, how do I say this? Uh, <laughs> tied into winter specifically as the season associated with the sign. So Virgos are very much tied into winter. So the fact that we got the winter card is very fantastic. And the sacredness of pausing is very much that you need to take time to pause. But also, maybe that's what's happened. All of the pausing that you've been doing, all of the feeling like lackluster. What, what, no, not even lackluster. Feeling like everything that you've been working towards has been put on pause. And now is the time to celebrate, and now is the time for things to move forward. Is that this... Okay, I just heard shadow work. So maybe a few... I'm also a Virgo, so I know that I've been working my butt off with some shadow work. So I feel like there is some shadow work that you have been doing that is going to cause a lot of forward movement for you for October. That actually... Yeah, that heard. I heard that one loud and clear. Okay, that's fair. So, I'm going to grab some clarification cards for you, Virgo, for October. I'm just going to clarify with the Halloween Tarot what we are got, what we have, I can't talk, for the Three of Cups. So, why is the Three of Cups here for Virgo for October 2020? Why is the Three of Cups here for Virgo? Okay, these cards do not want to go back in. That's a lot of cards. I'm not drawing all those cards. Whoop, that one fell. All right, so we have another swords card. So the bats are swords for this deck. It is talking about the two of bats, so two of swords. So with the two, 
This is talking about, it's kind of like a shadow work card in and of itself. So there's a lot that you've been doing that is making you make decisions, basically. There's a lot that you have been working on that you've had to make decisions. They might have been hard decisions. You might have been choosing between this versus that, you know. Um, you know, do I choose... I, I Some of you, I did hear, do I choose myself or do I choose my family? And that might have been something that you were working on with your shadow work as well as recognizing your own power and your own self-worth. So that obviously is not going to be for everybody. That might be for some people, though, is choosing yourself over choosing your family. And that might have been something that you were kind of brought to either recently or that might be something that you're going to be working through in October. So draw at least one more card. So why is the Three of Cups here? Why is the Three of Cups here? Whoop. Try not to lose that card. There we go. Okay. Yep. So we have the Eight of Bats, which is, again, the Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is talking about, you know, all of these bindings that are holding this person back are very loose. You are not tied down as badly as you think you are, even though it feels like it. It feels like everything is so tight around you that you can't breathe, but you can. You have the power within yourself to cut these bindings, cut these bonds, cut this off of you, unravel it, and move on. And maybe that's what that is, is this the shadow work that you're doing is going to be causing some celebration in October for sure. Alrighty, so why is this Queen of Cups here? Oh gosh, I have some jumper cards tonight. I'm just going to jump out all over the place. Ooh, we have the Six of Bats, another card, another sword card. So with the swords, this is all about intellect and activating the mind. So this one is talking about going on a journey, but there is something that you left behind. I think this card holds this one and the two of, of swords hold very, very strongly for me in tarot for uh, shadow work. So I feel like this one very, very strongly is that, you know, you're moving forward. There's a lot that you're moving forward with. You're moving on, but you had to leave something behind. Sometimes that's a piece of ourselves. Sometimes we're moving away from toxic people, toxic relationships, whatever that is, you know, things that are, uh, you know, someone that wasn't good for you or a situation that was no longer good for you and you just moved on. You left it behind and you had to move on. And with that Queen of Cups, especially because it's a clarification card for her, so I'm definitely feeling that, you know, you are moving on to stand true in your own power and know your emotions, know your self-worth. So why is this Queen of Cups here? What did I just say? Self-worth and the Empress pops out. What's up? So with the Empress card, of course, that is talking about pure, strong energy. Knowing yourself, knowing your power, like I always say. Definitely understanding that where you're coming from, the place that you are coming from, emotionally, physically, mentally, in the shadow place, you're moving forward with yourself and moving out of this darker place into something that is brighter. You are being lit the way. The lit way is lit for you, however you want to go with that. So why is this Ace of Swords here? Very curious. That's a lot of cards. That's literally a lot of cards. We're not doing that. Can't, come on. Very curious to see if that one card comes back out though. Why is the Ace of Swords here? Less than eight cards, please. Why is the Ace of Swords here? Why is the Ace of Swords here? Okay. So the Six of Ghosts, which is the Six of Cups for this deck, is talking about something nostalgic. There's something from your past that could be coming up, you know, and of course with the shadow work, this is, you know, something within your past that you were trying to not even necessarily fight, but you're trying to overcome. You're trying to see, you know, uh, if something happens, you're trying to figure out why you reacted a certain way, especially if it was negatively, and you're trying to see why that is the way that it is. It's kind of self-therapy in a way, pretty much is therapy. But with the Six of Ghosts or Six of Cups coming up with the Ace of Swords, Definitely is making me think that there's a lot that you are working on. There's been a lot that you're working on. There's been a lot of things that you're moving forward with that you've started and that you are starting. 
that is going to be very, uh, very much tied to your past. Again, like I said, this is very, very shadow work. A lot of celebratory moments, but it is definitely a lot of shadow work. So either you're coming out of a shadow period right now, a shadow work period, into a more celebratory moment in October, or for some of you, October is going to be driving you deeper into your shadow self in order to bring out those moments to be celebrated. So at least one more. So why is this Ace of Swords here? Why is this Ace of Swords here? I just heard I am here. I'm not 100% sure if that was... I have a few of my guides that like to pop up randomly during readings, so... I just heard I am here. And that's definitely something, like I said, that is with shadow work. You're not, you're never alone during shadow work, even though you do it solo 99% of the time. Like, you do have guides that are helping you. Okay, so I just had these ones pop out as I'm talking, but I'm still drawing for the Ace of Swords. So we got the Eight of Wands and the Nine of Wands. So with the Eight of Wands, this is talking about moving forward, just like with the Six of Baths, the Six of Swords. So you are doing a lot of moving forward in October. A lot of moving forward. With the Nine, the Nine is definitely talking about, you know, you're pretty guarded. There's been a lot of things that have brought your guard up in recent times and in the past, especially because with the Six of Ghosts, the Six of Wands, wrong, Six of Cups, um, you know, you, there have been a lot of things in your life that have caused you to be pretty guarded, but with this, of course, you're talking about, you know, there's a lot that you're moving forward from. There's definitely a lot that you're moving forward from, and that's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. So we're going to be drawing, like I said, from my, uh, Peculiar Fragments deck and see what we can get for some further Oracle insight for Virgo for October 2020. What can we get for Virgo for October? Okay. That was quick. I wasn't even finished shuffling. Oh, I can't grab it. There we go. All right, so we have the apparition. So for some of you, this might hit home. Some of you might not hit at all. Apparition says, though you feel invisible, you are not alone. Stop stretching yourself so thin and trying to please everyone. So with this, I feel that that is very, very strong. That also ties into shadow work is... is um, recognizing that, you know, people pleasing is unfortunately a form of, uh, personality in a way that you develop when you grow up being taught that you have to please everybody all the time. So don't stretch yourself so thin. You don't need to. It's not a requirement. You always have to take care of yourself as well. Take care of yourself first. I do want to draw one more. So I've been doing two for everybody. So October 2020 for Virgo. Can we get one more, please? One more card for Virgo. Maybe. I'm trying not to drop so many cards. And I know a card flipped out, and I'm not entirely sure which one it was because it just dropped back in. Oh, okay. That one was loud. So we have the timepiece. It says, to bleh, Determination and time are your friends. There is no need to rush. All comes in due time. Yep. So, like I was saying, I'm going to try. I'm pretty sure I saw the card that flipped out, and I... Yeah. So the jack-o'-lantern was also coming out. This light will get... Will I can't speak. The light will guide you on your journey and shows you the way you are led by tradition and good luck is on your side. So I feel like with all of these, this is definitely talking about moving forward. Of course, this is a moving forward card. The timepiece, of course, talking about needing to realize that everything is going to come to you when it needs to. That there is no need to rush. This is very much a you card with that especially. Very much talking about moving forward. That's just every single thing I keep hearing is just moving forward. I want to draw another one. I'm curious. 
just in general. Okay. If I said just in general, we got the two of ghosts, the two of, of cups, and then the seven of bats, the seven of swords. So the seven of swords is a card about deception. So this could be someone that might be trying to deceive you, trying to uh, take advantage of you potentially, especially with the apparition. Someone might try to take advantage of you for some people, for some of you Virgos in October. But this could also be self-deception. You might be telling yourself that you know, you have to please people all the time and all of this other shit, and you don't. You don't have to sit there and, and make um, other people's lives more of a priority than your own. So sometimes this can mean self-deception. Then the Two of Cups, the Two of Ghosts is talking about a union. You know, it could be a pairing off with a new relationship or something like that, but there's definitely something along the way that is coming. This can also be a union with yourself. It doesn't necessarily mean with another person. This could also be with yourself. Coming up with some more self-love. All right, so I'm obsessed with Beetlejuice, so I'm going to be drawing from a Beetlejuice playing card deck just to give a little extra insight with some tarot without drawing too many actual tarot cards. So for Virgo, let's see what kind of... All right, so we have the Ten of Diamonds, which is the Ten of Pentacles. I love how it's the two ghosts eh, with Lydia. But the Ten of Pentacles is a happy ending card. It is the all the tens are the ends of the road. So it's talking about all of the things that you've worked your butt off for is coming to fruition. Basically, all the things that you've worked hard for, especially because this is very shadow work based, all the things that you've worked hard for is going to come out happily in the end. All right, I'm just, I feel the need to draw so many friggin' cards for this one. I can actually operate this deck. One more card, just for giggles. Virgo, October 2020. Do I get not get no card? Do I not get no more cards? No? At all? Okay. Oh, interesting. I was just told to look at the bottom of the deck. So the jacks in these can... Some people say they represent the knights. Some people say they represent the pages. For me personally, I do say that they represent the knights. And the knight of hearts is the knight of cups. So this is moving forward with love. I love that they actually, some of these cards actually have, oh, look at that, the two of hearts underneath as well with the two of cups. So definitely, so this, um, you know, ties in with this actual picture, happily ever after, all the love that they have for each other, they've worked their butt off for and they've moved, moved toward that love the whole time. So I really love that that actually is the picture for that one. So we're gonna be drawing, or rolling rather, Dice as usual, gonna be doing letter dice and then number dice right behind it. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna draw, ooh, that's kind of a lot. Oh, we got a blank space, okay. I actually never drawn that in a reading. So we have we, we also have was. There's an N in here. There's new as well. I see new. The blank space can literally represent time. Now, the blank space specifically does represent time, so it is talking about a new space, a new time, a new chance, a new beginning. So, I really feel like that actually kind of like newest, like, just kind of forms a sentence, kind of, sort of. I can't really do it right now, but I feel like that actually does form something relatively coherent for grammar. But there is something new that is happening for you, Virgo, in October. Whether that is you are starting on a new shadow work venture, or maybe you're coming out of a shadow work period in order to, um, you know, have that celebratory moment with that Three of Cups hidden under there. So I really feel like there's a lot of pausing that you've done recently. There is a lot of remembering. There's a lot of things from your past that are going to be coming up, or they already have. 
but October is going to be a big move for you and moving forward for you. Focusing less on other people, focusing less on pleasing other people, and moving forward with yourself. So, of course, you're going to be... Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the white dice, if I can actually do this. There's going to be a significant date, specifically, because this is for October. So it's going to be a date, it could be an age, anything like that, but a number, specifically, that is going to be a good time for you for October. Obviously, this only goes so far, but you can add numbers and make numbers however you need to. So we're going to see what we've got for October. We have 2, 2, and 5. Interesting. Especially because we did get the 2, with the 2 of bats, and the 2 of cups. <laughs> um, so you, we did get two twos, basically. Didn't think we got any fives, no. Didn't get any fives. But there is definitely a lot going on. Two, two, and five. I feel like that's something very significant. It could be the ninth. The ninth could be something very significant for you. Or it could be the 25th as well. Maybe 27th. However, that needs to fall into uh, how it needs to for you. So the black dice are going to be something significant that needs to shake up your life. This is going to be something that needs to be shaken up for whatever reason. And it's probably not going to be your favorite day in October, but it does need to happen. Very curious. Five, five, and six. Okay. Lots of fives. <laughs> Five, five, and six. Okay, so that again could be something with, you know, actually October 6th specifically. Could have a moment for you. Could also be the 26th as well. I don't know why the 26th just popped into my head. Um, yeah, for some reason the 26th just popped into my head. I have absolutely no idea why. That doesn't even make numerical sense but okay um so red dice of course gonna be red dice for love i'm gonna be seeing what's happening for your love life for october for a go i'm gonna see what's gonna be happening for you one three and six again okay so oops i don't know why i'm concerned with these cards they're already scooched around so that could be the anything <laughs> Um, the one is, of course, you know, starting brand new. Obviously, there's not 36 days in October, but it could be almost anything. I'm very, very curious to see how 1, 3, and 6. It's very fascinating. Okay, interesting, because that does add up to the 10th, of course, or 10. So, maybe... Seven, nine, ten. No, what is that? Nine. Yeah, that's nine. That's ten. Sixteen. Interesting. So maybe like that second week of October and that third week. So around the middle of October might be pretty significant for you. I have a sneaky suspect. I swear by the gods if this lands on a two i'm gonna be actually a little grumpy because sometimes i get kind of freaked out when i can guess the number so, i have a sneaky suspicion i might land on a completely different number though please do but lucky number dice we're definitely gonna be seeing what lucky number we can get for you virgo for october okay a one good <laughs> but a one like i said is talking about starting over a one is um you know just something brand new Something that is happening for you that is going to be brand new. New. Something, you know, you have a blank slate. There is something brand new that is starting for you that is going to need to happen. All right, Virgo, this is what I got for y'all. I did draw a few extra cards just because I felt like I needed to. But this is what I have for you. I feel like it's very shadow work. There's a lot of you time coming in, and I absolutely love that. There's definitely going to be something big for you coming in October. 
I'm very excited, Virgo. Very stoked to hear how this resonates. I do hope it does. And until next time, know yourself and know your power.